joined by Jeanette Parrott. She is in New Zealand, and I want you to picture this for a second. You're in a really remote area, and you're dairy farming, and you're a fifth-generation dairy farmer. Personally, I think it's so, so cool. Her book, You Have Been Given a Gift, can really stretch in a lot of different directions, and she's got a fascinating story to tell. Jeanette, uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you've been given a gift. What was the motivation behind wanting to write this book? Um, I guess it was to leave a, a, a trail of breadcrumbs, you might might say, um, so that others could follow, so others could be inspired. It's um, Yeah, I think that's, that's it in a nutshell. And as I said at the top, you're a fifth-generation dairy farmer, and you and I talked off the air, what, like what – was it that made you decide I'm going to do this? I'm going to do the family business, so to speak. Was it just a love for the life? Was it curiosity? Was what was it? What was the reason behind wanting to do it? I I think it's I think it's lifestyle. I know when I went to school, biology was one of my favorite topics, and um, but I never thought it would actually come come to fruition because I also liked writing like English was another one of my favorite subjects so I also enjoyed writing things but I could never see myself in a desk in in, uh, in four walls I could only see myself out in the fresh air uh, enjoying the animals enjoying nature admiring the trees and the birds that that was the only only place for me so it, it's a lifestyle more than making a fortune but um, what's the value of money this, this lifestyle is the best it's the best I love that you have that passion and you can tell you are absolutely authentic and, and you love doing what you do and being out there. What's a typical day like? Typical day, my, my daughter and I, we, we've been farming together for 20 odd years because um, husband didn't want to do any more on, on the farm. So for her and I, we get up about half past five in the morning and we'd jump on the four wheel motorbike, go down, go down the farm get the girls into the shed to, to milk them. And that takes about two and a half hours. We've got 180 cows and it takes about two and a half hours to, to milk them. With well, the longest part being getting them to the shed and actually washing down after. And then we'd come home for breakfast about about eight, nine o'clock, depending on the time of the season. Um, in springtime, we'd have to take the milk to the, to the young calves and feed them and make sure they're all, all okay. And uh, okay, breakfast about eight o'clock, and then we'd have a have a morning just to decide what we actually want to do. If there was a water pipe need fixing, if there was a sick cow that needs attending, um, even to put fertilizer on, we'd, we'd decide of a morning what we're going to do. Um, on the farm, we we actually it's seven days a week. So what we do of a Monday to Friday, we may have to do Saturday or Sunday. It's 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 not. Um, it's not regimented by any particular day, more regimented by the weather and how the animals are of, of a particular time. So lunchtime, yeah, just, just the normal or during the day, we're catching up with odd jobs and then back to get the cows about four o'clock and again about another two hours in the shed and then home for the night meal around 6, 6.30. And, and, you know, in your book, it's fascinating. You You talk about the fact that for 40 years, You've really fed 6,000 men, women, and children. That has to make you feel, it kind of gave me goosebumps. That has to make you feel proud. Yeah, no, and that's more or less every day. And um, it's not till I actually got to put that book together that I, I started thinking, my gosh, what am I doing here? And that was one of the, um, yeah, quite, quite a proud moment when I worked out, you know, if everyone drank a liter of milk a day that's that's how many we'd be feeding every day which yeah you won't you wouldn't drink a liter a day but then it goes into yogurt and goes into butter um even the cow itself goes into medicinal things um yeah i know it's it's probably a lot lot more than that but it is it's another way of, of satisfaction I, pres, I suppose you um could say because it's something you don't really think a lot about yeah, it's the, to the title of your book, you've been given a gift. And one of the big gifts, you mentioned it briefly, is the fact that you're a mother-daughter team for the past 20 years, and the youngest of your four is the one that works with you. What's that been like? <laughs> yeah, a very, very special um, 
a relationship. Like, uh, yeah, we actually live in the same house. In fact, when she was leaving school around 15, 16 years old, she said, Mum, I'm, ne- I'm not leaving. I can't leave without my, my girls, which are the four-legged ones that are running around the paddock. And so she hasn't left. Um, and now she's got a partner and, uh, and there's two grandchildren. And again, we all live in the same house. So we're with each other 24-7. We do have our disagreements. But it's it's like a mistake. You sort of okay. You learn from that and you move forward. But very few. And um, like I say, living and working together twenty four seven. It's pretty special. Pretty it sounds special. it sounds special. And another thing that that has happened on the farm is you've gone organic. And for people listening, what's the like to make a switch? Is it is it a lot of extra work? Is it different? What does it mean? What do you do to go organic? It's very, very satisfying. It's it's a well, it's a gift that, that we've all had, but we've all been shaped to add synthetic fertilizers, to add chemicals, to add antibiotics. And we've actually as farmers, we have lost our own intuition to be able to be in contact with the land and contact with the animals. And it's, it was a, re, it's a renewing of what we already had somewhere in our DNA. So it was challenging and to go organic without the antibiotics, without all the props that have been thrown to farmers. It's, yeah, very challenging and you've got to be willing to accept mistakes. You don't, you don't learn if you don't make a mistake. And yeah, we've we've lost we've we've made mistakes, um, but we've learnt for them and um, a lot stronger for it. So, providing you actually get into a, a a peer group or find somebody else that can help to guide, it it helps a lot. But um, when I first started way back in two thousand and six, my daughter and I actually, there weren't a lot of places to go to find out how you actually treat an animal that might have woody tongue other than giving them drugs or a cow with scours how do you give them treatment for that but now we've we've discovered what cow with scours you give her some baking soda and molasses and a cow with woody tongue which is a lack of iodine we actually give her kombucha so we've discovered a lot of these little little different ways of doing it by ourselves so I guess you have to learn to yeah Google, Google, and contact with people who have already been there, done that. Does that make it interesting? Because that goes back to your roots of really liking biology. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes it really interesting. And the only reason I, I um, we came on, on the about the kombucha for the woody tongue is because I had a very sore throat and I had some kombucha and bang, the sore throat went. And I thought, well, <coughs> excuse me, I wonder if that would work for a cow who's got the woody tongue because woody tongue is just a bacteria that's living in that part of the um the body and um and sure enough as long as we got it in the early days um it has worked wow um i love that i'm just picturing that that you're you're there almost like a little scientist mad scientist with your daughter thinking this is it we have the answer when people read your book you've been given a gift what do you hope they take away from reading it inspiration that we're not alone, and like I've actually mentioned in the book, I'm by no means the only one that's gone through the challenges like I, like we have as a family and like I have. So we're not alone in this, and there is always some around the corner who's worse off, but um, providing providing you don't give up, providing you've got that will to, to carry on, um, yeah, go for it. <coughs> Excuse do, you me. Think, do you think now – that maybe the grandchildren or one of the grandchildren will want, will be interested in this as well? Yeah, yeah, in a, in a different way um, because they're already like, oh, excuse me, I have got a frog in my throat. Um, the children are homeschooled. They don't go through the main system. And um, to see them uh, being amongst the animals and, um, and actually walking them to the cow shed is amazing. I bet. I bet it's amazing to watch that, especially because as I started off and we discussed fifth generation dairy farmer, and then to see that that's taken root too as well. And they're probably embracing the joy that they see with you and your daughter and the rest of your family, the the great parts about being there. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, the, the little guy who's actually five now, he's, he's got his pet. He's called, It's just a cow that's decided, okay, I'm going to be friends with you, and they, he calls her, her Poppy. And um, <laughs> so at the moment he's walking behind Poppy at the end of the, end of the herd going to the shed. He's in bare feet. And, um, yeah, Poppy just knows he's there and, and he pats her belly right beside her and here's this big cow rising, rising above this little five-year-old. It's amazing. You know, and you talk about other uses for the milk, cheese, butter, yogurt, you know, leather is another one too. And just the pure milking of 180 cows, how long does that take? Not long, not long. It's about, I think it's only about... 40 to 50 minutes, the actual cups are on the cows. The longest part is bringing them to the shed um, and then cleaning up afterwards. Cleaning up afterwards, um, it's just like doing the dishes, um, but it, take, it takes about <laughs> half an hour. So, <laughs> yeah. My great takeaway from this is the cows are like the dishes. That's wonderful that you said that. <laughs> when I'm doing the dishes, I'm going to think of you. Jeanette Perrette, you are just delightful. And this book is wonderful. You've been given a gift. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Thanks. Thank you so much, Kate. It's been a pleasure. Georgia on my mind. My mind. Georgia, oh my Georgia.